yesterday's video, if you haven't. I think it might be one of my best, to be honest. Anyways, tonight we're having a nice little chill one-on-one -on -one talk. And tonight we're going to be talking, well not only talking, we're going to be ranking the best cartoon kids whatever shows uh, that we, I'm assuming, both grew up on. I'm sure some of the juggernaut TV shows that we all, everyone even around the world, have seen, and maybe even some that maybe you like more than others, and same for me, but we are going to be at least looking over my own tier list of some shows uh, that I grew up on. Some very, very nostalgic shows. So with that being said, make sure you like the video. If you do like the video, liking the video is the best thing you can do for this channel, this video, YouTube's algorithm, all that fun stuff. I keep saying that now in all my intros. Also, you absolutely, right now, if you are watching this video right now, you, right now, you have to comment down below your favorite TV show of all time, or at least one that you grew up on, and maybe you can also tie along with that comment of other people are saying the same one as you, maybe your favorite episode, your favorite moment, your favorite character, your favorite whatever about that, that uh, TV show. Let me know. I would love to know your own opinion. And with that being said, uh, let us get started. Started, 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 started. Yes, we in fact have the same, same, same little uh, tier listing as we always do. We have the S tier, the A tier, the B tier, the C tier, the D tier, and of course the very famous not for me tier, because I don't know your opinion. Maybe you like shows that I really hate, or maybe just dis really dislike, so they're just, they're just not for me. Let's take a look at the first one here. We have in fact with Adventure Time. Um, I didn't watch a whole lot of Adventure Time. I did watch a good handful of it when it first started coming out, but then I, obviously with a lot of TV shows out there, they started to lose me a little bit, but it was pretty lengthy, but it was really good. It had a pretty good story, it had a lot of funny moments. I'm actually going to put Adventure Time for a show on here, kind of sets the tone of things. At an A tier, characters are pretty iconic, the storyline is pretty it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool also to see Finn and like him upgrading his suit and the relationships he makes with the different characters. It's, it's kind of dope. So Adventure Time, pretty good show. Wow. And next up, we have a very classic show with the Amanda, 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 Amanda show. Some of you might not have ever even seen this show before. Um, wow. This definitely hits nostalgia for me, which by the way, a lot of these shows are going to be nostalgia hits. I'm going to be taking that into consideration, but I also kind of have to think about it without the nostalgia factor at some degree. Amanda Show is definitely a show that I can remember hits more of the nostalgia factor than the actual good TV show factor. I'm going to put Amanda Show in C tier. Now again, very iconic, iconic characters. The cast is great. Funny moments here and there, but overall, not, not the greatest. So taking into some consideration about the nostalgia, I'll put it in C. They had a couple good sketches that I can think about at the top of my head, like the hillbilly with Drake Bell and stuff like that, but uh, probably wasn't the greatest show all around. And then also when we get shows that I have never seen before, you can definitely comment them down below, your own opinions about shows that I need to watch that maybe I haven't seen, haven't seen enough of, or have no idea what they are, down in the comments if you, if you really like them. But next up, at least for a show that I have seen before a handful of times, is Angry Beaver. Um, this was an interesting cartoon. It's definitely one of the more, like, slow-paced, serious, like, witty type of comedy cartoon 
this storyline with this show. I think every episode is its own little short of courage hanging out with some of the actual creepiest things I've ever seen. And that show even now freaks me out. And some people like that aspect of the show. Me growing up and even now still find that show eerie. But a show that did resonate with me a lot that I really liked. And the animation was cool. The concept, the story, the continuous uh, connection with the characters is in fact Danny Phantom. And Danny Phantom, in my opinion, goes in S tier. Yes, I liked Danny Phantom that much. And not only did I like it that much, I genuinely think it's a good show. I think it's funny. I think it has great sort of like action sequences. Um, Again, sort of like the storyline of Danny being a normal kid, learning out the normal kid life, but like being like a ghost hunter, whatever, is pretty dope. And he's kind of like a superhero, which obviously has a a little kid growing up, I thought was, oh my god, that's awesome. Um, and again, like the storyline, there's actually like a, a building storyline, which I always enjoy, even in children's cartoons and TV shows, something that they're actually working towards. I think it's really dope. Um, Dexter's Laboratory, um, a little bit out of my age range, just a little bit. I liked it. I'm going to put them in the A tier. Maybe I might move it down to B. I also remember it being just like a random assortment of just like random instances of Dexter doing stuff. Um, you know, the DD character is kind of annoying. Um, did I really like the show? Not really. It's just super nostalgic, kind of the same thing with a cat dog. Maybe I'll move it back up to A, but it's funny. Good spots, good episodes, but like, you know, it doesn't really tie together like a lot of the other shows that are kind of ahead of it, at least in my own eyes. Ooh, Doug is another one that's just right out of my age range, but I have seen some episodes, and guys, that's going to not for me. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are, are probably too young to know what Doug was, and again, which is more of a slow-paced, I don't want to say boring show. Now, this show, if you're someone who really likes a story, story with a, a TV show. Maybe you would be more into the show, but uh, I like a little bit of story. I like the stories to make sense and be continuous. Doug was like an actual TV show, TV show with like continuation on and on. And again, it just didn't really resonate all that well with me. <sighs> but what is for me, and I kind of wish I would save this show for later, but we're already at it. S tier. We got Drake and Josh. Drake and Josh, of course, is S tier. That show, as a kid, as a teenager, even me watching a couple episodes as an adult, it's so good. The comedy in that show is timeless. It's timeless. The continuation of storyline is amazing. The character development is amazing. The character development in this show almost almost perfect for again a, a children's teenager TV show on Nickelodeon um the, the cast are great the acting is amazing I I, I love it I, I love it a lot you can watch this sh- show in continuation you can watch the show one random piece at a time and still be just as enjoyable <sighs> I like it a lot as dear for drinking Josh no duh Ed Ed and Eddie I'll put Ed and Eddie at B tier um, I, I, I thought the show was okay. Uh, it's some funny parts. Um, nostalgia. Really, B tier is kind of a nostalgia tier, as you can tell. But it's still pretty funny. Um, again, I don't remember really anything about the actual storyline besides, like, the jawbreaker stuff. Um, that's really, yeah, I think it's also a TV show that just had individual randomness happening every once in a while. But it was a funny show. So B tier. Uh, next up, let's see what we got, we got, ooh, even Stevens, even Stevens. Man, I haven't seen all that much of it, I know it's on Disney Plus now, but I haven't had enough time to, to give it a look. I think I'm gonna put even Stevens in C tier, like really high C tier. From what I can remember, it was also kind of good, kind of hit and miss for a majority of the episodes. I feel like they tried they tried to be too funny sometimes. Some of the skits they did were a little a little cringy looking back, but the acting was good. The actors in this are, are amazing. 
amazing for their age range and stuff. It's absolutely amazing, but I think it could have been a little bit more story-led plot, uh, in my opinion. Um, but I really, I really enjoyed it, but it's just not, eh, I'd have to rewatch it, but I can remember right now, it's nothing too crazy, and it also doesn't really, uh, a nostalgia factor all that much. Oh, fairly odd appearance. Oh my god, that is almost an instant S tier. That might be one of my top watched shows growing up as a kid. I mean, we all know Fairly Odd Parents. The best thing about it is the concept a kid who gets to wish for whatever he wants. Well, almost whatever he wants, as long as it uh, is in line with the rules. Not the rules, it's the rules. Um, man, so it's like a, a whole universe in this show. Like, there's so many characters and side characters and storyline and so many great episodes. Like, oh my god, I think maybe the best episode of any cartoon I've ever seen was the uh, episode where Timmy Turner goes into the TV and he goes through all those, like, TV shows and stuff. Like, dude, that is such an amazing episode. Like, that's one of my favorites of all time. Ooh, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. That's definitely a B or an A tier. Which one do I do? That's also a show that I don't know what network it could be on now or streaming platform, but I really want to watch all of it because I really enjoyed it as a kid. I'll put it in. I'll put it in high B for right now, only because I can't really remember a lot, like specifics, which definitely isn't a isn't a good thing. So. But I know I really enjoyed it. The character's really cool. Um, different um, characters in the show had different sort of like wit and uh, characteristics about them, different sort of comedic timing. I know there was like a long storyline as well with this, with some of the, the people in there. The voice acting was really cool. The animation and art style was amazing. But I don't really remember anything from it, like specifically like any episodes. I know, that's, that's, yeah, that's not a good thing, so I'll put it in B for now. We have... Hannah Montana, Hannah Montana, Hannah Montana. Now, I would say, oh, it might surprise you that I used to watch this show. But now, looking back on it, it's not surprising because this show is really good. I'm putting Hannah Montana in S tier. No shame about it whatsoever. I like the show a lot. I, I thought, um, obviously, the acting for the, the, the stars that were in there at the show at the time were all amazing. Uh, again, a, a continuous story plot that wasn't too planned and boring. It sort of changed and, and moved over time, and I thought it did everything pretty well. The, the comedy was, was, was fun. Um, obviously, there's some parts of it where it's, of course, like a girly maybe show, but there are a lot of aspects that also really, like, didn't really feel that way in this TV show, which I think they definitely hit pretty much almost on the dot. There was, a, there was an era where I, I would sit down and watch some, that's for sure, especially like after school, it would be on TV, you know, I'd have it on. Ooh, next up we have Hey Arnold. Now this is also kind of a hard one to rank. I'll put it in B. I'll put it with the other sort of nostalgia hit ones. Um, it's definitely more of a slow, slow, slow paced show for kids. Maybe more of like a, a preteen type of TV show. Some more like um, melancholy sort of comedy. Just sort of like low paced show which can be can be fun sometimes um the voice acting might be my favorite part about this show it's really really dynamic and i think the art style is always really cool kind of like realism mixed in with some fantasy and i i liked it not too much though but just enough um i carly i carly i didn't get into a whole lot uh i watched it when it first came on because of course it's a attached to Drake and Josh, so of course I at least tuned into it, and I watched the, pretty much the beginnings of it the first couple seasons after that, I kind of let it go away, but I'll put it in like a, a high C tier technically, but I'm going to put it in C tier with all the other ones. I can't really remember any moments, I just know the concept of it. Um, I know the acting of it was pretty cool. I can remember it being like a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of a up version of Drake and Josh, and I think I didn't like that aspect that it overplayed, like the slapstick, jokey type of comedy stuff. It didn't really feel too natural, and I think the storyline, or at least whatever the storyline was, wasn't that great because I can't even re really remember it all that much. Are you guys ready for 
another super fiery hot take from Jake Baller. Well, you got one. Invader Sim. Invader Sim. Invader Sim. That's going in D tier. Um, that is just a show that I didn't really resonate with a whole lot. Didn't catch my eye. Didn't really like the animation or I guess the art style you would call it. And I don't really remember anything of it. I know I watched episodes, of course, growing up because it was insanely popular and even still is till this day, but the show's just not really for me, but I do respect it as a, as a, as a very popular show, so I'm not going to put it at the very bottom, but it's just a show that I didn't really like a whole lot. Okay, let's start rapid firing off some um, Jimmy Neutron S tier. Maybe besides Fairly Hard Parents, one of my most watched shows as a kid, and maybe the best movies as a, a childhood movies of all time like cartoon movies of all time is jimmy neutron which also by the way people forget the entire jimmy neutron show came from the jimmy neutron movie which also blows my mind because that movie is really good um jesse yikes that's gonna go in d tier kind of explains for itself it's kind of like a uh it felt like a ripoff of a ripoff of a show just didn't really again resonate with me the, the very few episodes I see uh, saw because again kind of growing out of my TV watching days uh, we have Johnny Bravo even though it is super nostalgic that is a definitely not for me to not for a lot of different reasons that show is just definitely didn't age very well and also just kind of weird we do in fact have Kim Possible and Kim Possible that's an A tier that's a show that has action. It has, you know, cool moments here and there. It has an entire storyline. Uh, the voice acting was absolutely amazing. Kind of had it all, to be honest, for a kid show that applies to, you know, everyone. Lizzie McGuire, also going to put in C tier. I know that C tier is covered in those ones. I need to think about this ranking a little bit more, but it's just the same thing. Like, even Stevens, iCarly, they're, they're, they're good in ways, but like also just didn't resonate with me, didn't stick with me, doesn't have the nostalgia factor of the B-tier ones, or just weren't as good. Obviously, Lizzie McGuire is a nostalgia phenom when it comes to a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people, but just, again, just not for me. <laughs> so, ooh, Ned's Declassified School Survivor Guide, Survival Guide, Survival Guide, and that is an S-tier, yes, for me. It's an S tier for maybe you. You either don't know it, don't remember it, or thought it was dumb. I liked it. Very quickly, the best way to describe this show. It's almost like the TikTok of TV shows. Like everything, every episode was different. Every episode taught you a lesson about how to survive middle school. Definitely at the beginning, but as the story continued, you actually got to learn more about the characters and the relationships and the individuality that they had, and it grew to be an actual TV show at one point. Super, super underrated uh, kids show, maybe even one of the most underrated ones in my opinion. <laughs> Phil of the future. I feel bad. I'm going to put it in C tier. Oh god, this C tier is getting loaded with live action. It's just again. It's just a live action show that had some good moments here and there. I think this show actually had like a plot line, but it, I just don't remember it all that much. And I've, if I can also remember the acting wasn't all that great, but uh, you know, it's there. It's pretty okay. Uh, Phineas and Ferb is an S tier. That is maybe a better correlation with being a TikTok like TV show because that's really every episode is different and random and funny and crazy colorful storyline in there as well as well memorable characters memorable moments um that's a hit that is a definite hit from Disney shout out to them <laughs> uh Powerpuff Girls I'm gonna put that one you guessed it actually I'm gonna put them in C tier I'm trying to think if I can remember anything about it. I know it's Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup. Um, I know they have like a demon lobster as a villain. There's Mojo Jojo as well as a villain. As for like any actual things detailing the show, absolutely nothing. So not going to put it in B tier because 
because it's nostalgic. I actually don't really remember anything about the show at all, but I remember it being okay, and obviously it's extremely popular, so I'll put it in C tier. Uh, Recess. Recess is good. Recess is an A tier. That is not only a humongous nostalgic hit, especially for me, being someone who definitely loved Disney more than Nickelodeon or the Cartoon Network. This was a great, great show. Uh, continuation of plot, growth of characters, the movies were really good too. If you guys have ever seen any of the Recess movies, um, those were pretty fire. Um, yeah, I liked it a lot. The side characters as well. Uh, they had a pretty, another show that had like a universe in it, in, in itself. And I think that's, that's a cool telling of a good show. A uh, regular show, that's an A tier, kind of the same thing I was talking about. A whole universe of a show, amazing voice acting, actually a great storyline and plot. You had some randomness, some funniness, but also tied in with a lot of serious and maybe even some deep, 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 deep moments also. Um, sort of a good tier of show that can sort of correlate to young adults too, even some kids out there. That's that's a good one. Rocco's Modern Life, I think that, what, what this one was called, uh, that's a not for me. Kind of like with uh, Angry Beaver. Just kind of a slow-paced, weird animated, weird storylined plot and execution. It's not really for me, especially growing up as a kid. Rugrats. The thing about Rugrats that's really hard to rank is that do you even remember watching an episode of the Rugrats? You know what I mean? Like, I wondered if I went back and watched an episode now if I would still enjoy it. The thing is, I probably wouldn't put it in B tier, but for, like, actual enjoyment of a TV show. I don't know if I could put on an episode of Rugrats and even like finish all of it without getting bored or just not really liking it all that much. That's God, Spongebob. S tier. Near the top of the S. Every kid's favorite sh TV show growing up. That's just, we don't need to talk about it. Spongebob is, is kind of in a league of its own. Well, early on Spongebob, not later on. That kind of correlates differently. We're not thinking about that Spongebob. <laughs> um, Titans, oh my god, Teen Titans, that's that's an A tier. If it was maybe a longer series, I maybe would put it in S tier, and I actually do kind of want to put it in S tier, because man, this was a show I watched, watched as a kid. This, this show made me love Robin, like really love DC and Robin, Cyborg and Beast Boy, and like, man, actually great story as well, with the main villain, and just the, the growth of the characters is insane like this was an actual like tv comic show oh i almost want to put it in s tier but i won't i won't i don't want to we'll, we'll move on really good show though uh that's so raven i'm also going to put an a tier yes i really enjoyed that's a raven now that is a show that really hit really good with comedy and story um that is a, a funny show. I have actually recently watched maybe like an episode or two on Disney Plus just randomly one night when I was flipping through just randomness that was on there and I watched all of it. I, I giggled sometimes. I enjoyed it and the acting is, is, is amazing. Raven Simone during this time period was maybe one of the biggest child stars at the time and it really showed because she really made the show. Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Man, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody or Drake and Josh might be my favorite shows of all time. I have to think about it when it comes to sort of live action or even just any TV show in general. I, uh, I love those shows so much. Sweet Life is amazing. That It's it's on Disney Plus. I've already watched. I binged the entire series of it. And, uh, man, is it good. Sweet Life on Deck, though, is more of like a B-tier kind of mid, kind of just carrying on the coattails of the, the, the Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, but Sweet Life on Deck was kind of okay i guess and that's gonna be it for me for this video again definitely comment down below your favorite your favorites maybe shows you